Well, it's been a great morning so far. It's been fantastic to be able to join with you if you're with us on Church Online or Facebook too. And we wanted to conclude this morning our Sabbath series um, by looking at some questions that have been sent in. And Paul and myself are going to attempt to answer some of these questions. Um, some of them have had a little look or a little bit tricky, but we're going to try our best, aren't we? We'll try our best. So we hope that this is helpful um, as we share some of our own personal stories and try and try and get into some of the bits of things that you are still questioning about of how you Sabbath, when you Sabbath, what you Sabbath, everything to do with Sabbath. And there's a few extra questions thrown in there for good measure at the end too. So shall we make a start? Yeah, let's get going. Sarah. Okay then, though the first question that's come in is this, what does Sabbath look like for you? And is it different for both of us? That's a great question. Um, I think answering the second part of that question, does it look uh, different for both of you? Absolutely. I think. We've, we've learned on this journey that um, we are two different people and we like different things. So for me, um, I, I find rest from work going and doing things such as running. Um, I like sketching um, and uh, just going for a walk with the dog, taking some time to reflect and think, you know, that refreshes me. I find rest in that. And uh, so for me, yeah, and I like quiet time. Um, I like time on my own, but I also like time with people and I get energized by people as well. So there's a mixture from me about you well i'm quite the opposite to paul although as paul says he he enjoys going for a walk i'll enjoy doing that but generally i think i feel refreshed and get that sabbath time when i have some time on myself so whereas paul says he feels refreshed by people i feel refreshed by just being with me <laughs> so we are very different i find being refreshed being with you well, as well i'm just Sarah. a refreshing person aren't i so <laughs> i'm just all around good stuff so you know i think it is different for both of us and we've had to learn with many things in our marriage but especially in this area to understand each other and to know what those differences are and how we are different and sometimes the complete opposites yeah. can be helpful for us and I think it's about having that conversation and sharing well this is what I need yeah. this is what's helpful for me mm -hmm. and I think that's how we've been able to help each other with that and I think that leads into the next question actually and I'm jumping ahead of myself yeah, it, so it, yeah, I mean just touching on it is about it's about self-awareness but also you know other people can help you see the things that you need so I know sometimes Sarah's encouraged me to do things because she knows they're good for me so for example going watch the football is good for me it's it's a break from work and um, I, I find it refreshing so Sarah's often encouraged me to do things because she sees the things that are good for me so it's been self-aware but also aware of each other as Sarah says it's good for me because it goes out the house so when we're not well let's move on before we fall out so go on number two do you want to read it for us okay Paul? how do you understand we've kind of touched on this and help each other have individual sabbath rest yeah i think we have talked about that it's it's understanding ourselves but it's understanding each other as well yeah. and when we understand ourselves then we can communicate what we find helpful yeah. but then when we understand the other person like you've said already we can encourage them and i'll say to you you know go and have a run go and have some quiet time it'll do you good and you equally will take the girls out and let me have some time on myself which you know is helpful for me so. yeah yeah it is like i say it's being self-aware we've kind of touched on that um you know for me you know, recreation, recreation is something that I, I learned I, f I learned a while ago, but I also forget sometimes that actually going doing something creative can be refreshing for us. And it's finding the very thing that energizes us, what we, we enjoy doing, it encourages in our spirits. And, um, you know, it's finding those things we, we've kind of touched on. Yeah. So recreation, I think is really important. I felt God encouraged me to make sure I do that kind of stuff. Um, it's good for me and it's also good for others as well so I think we've touched on that one next question okay let's have a look well we got quite a few questions in to do with family and to do with how we Sabbath with our children we've got two girls um, who are 11 and 14 make sure I get it right and I've just sort of tried to put these questions together because quite a few of them came in in this line so basically along the lines of how has Sabbath changed as the girls have grown up how do you sabbath with your children and how do you involve them in this practice so questions sort of around that theme well i think first of all um you know children it, they can be hard work at different ages and different seasons um, we've found it you know challenging but i think i think some of it is a mindset as well i think initially 
you know that there's an issue within ourselves of selfishness and so we're having to work through our own issues personally and actually have a mindset that children aren't work children are there to be enjoyed although they feel like work at times and it's not always restful and um, they're there to be enjoyed and I think it's a mindset really for me um, as well so I just felt to say that really and, and that's a journey and that's a process for us and you know and realizing we're, we're here to, to love them and you know that they're not just work they're here to be loved so I just yeah. felt to say that no I think that's really good Paul I think from a practical point of view as the girls have grown up you know when they were younger they would perhaps go to bed you know seven o'clock and we'd have an evening where you can take some time you can spend some time reading you can spend some time praying you can spend some time just taking a rest or you know just contemplating things whereas as they've got older now they don't go to bed at that time they sometimes go to bed after i've gone to bed because i'm a yeah. bit of a you're a night owl and i'm not so i like to get up early and go to bed early so sometimes the girls are awake well past i've gone to sleep and are snoring away aren't they so it's finding different ways of doing things and I think for us as the girls have got older it's being able to talk to them about that as well you know Grace enjoys to journal herself in an evening so she understands that Olivia understands she's an early bird like me and she understands when I get up in the morning I like to read my bible and have that time so it's being able to have those conversations with them and I think that's how Sabbath's changed as they've got older is that you're able to talk to them more and explain I'm just taking some time out yeah. now and doing this and they get that and they understand that in in the part of Sabbath in seeing what we do but then and also you know looking at the Bible themselves and journaling when when they do those things yeah yeah and it's finding the things you want to do together you know it's, it's not always easy sometimes because one child wants to do one and one child wants to do another and they can often conflict especially as they're getting older they've got their own opinions now um, but you know I think it's finding things we often sit down at the beginning of the year and uh, reflect on what we want to do this year and we involve them in that conversation now you know what would you like to do what would you like to achieve this year and you know we, we try and encourage them in doing things other than school so we find out what they like doing so for example Grace likes climbing so I take Grace climbing that's refreshing for me it's a place that I can go from work but I can also spend time with Grace and she she enjoys uh, climbing so it's it's a it's a break from the things that she does and she I think she finds that refreshing Olivia has her um, things that she enjoys doing but we do things together as a family as well so we holiday together and we do things that we we find refreshing we find restful and we put those things in and you know one of the things we do when we do go on holiday is we don't take our phones and um Oh, you brought your phone into filming, how naughty. <laughs> and you know, it's something that originally was fine because we, we were happy with that. It was a decision Paul and I made, but as the girls got older and they got phones and mm. they want to use the phones and they want to be on social media and it, it can be a bit more of a battle and yet they still understand the benefit of taking time out from them. And it's things that we do like that where we, we Sabbath as a family when we go on holiday that we take time out from social media, we take time out from our phones and devices um, and, and have that time is, is really helpful and that's something that we do with the girls. Whether they'll carry that practice on as they get older, I don't quite know. I'm not um, sure but yeah it, it's something that we think is a helpful thing yeah we find course. it helpful and we find we have better quality time with the girls as well and we do things so you know playing games in the evening rather than being on your phone and different things so you know it, it's having them disciplines as well at home obviously you want to try and put some things in place but not be too strict you want to and it's finding the balance with that I find, I find with social media so yeah we find that works holidays not having social media is, is a real blessing so yeah Okay, next question then. Okay, how do you take Sabbath when life is busy? Wow. That's a tough question, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think that on this question, um, it, it's about prioritising. Um, I think there are many things we can do and, there, and, and we have to learn to find out what the things we should be doing. Um, I remember when I was, um, I was in Africa and there was a gentleman I was talking to, a lovely guy from uh, America. I was talking to him in the morning having breakfast and I was being picked up 
and um, just I was I, I'd got my breakfast I sat down at the table and I was talking having a lovely conversation and all of a sudden the, the, there was a bus outside and it was picking me up um, and it was all I heard was the horn going beep beep and uh, I jumped up out of my chair and I said I've got to go I've got to go and he just looked at me and he said he said sit down and I said um, I've got to go he says no you, you don't he said they can wait for you and um, and actually I wasn't late I was actually they were actually early so I was not I was not late in having my breakfast they were quite a, a bit early and I just realized at that point I thought you know what I need to be in control of you know that there are things that make us busy you know that this guy people is always causing me to rush and causing me to be anxious and you know it was kind of dictating to me and I realized at that moment there are things that try and dictate to us um, and cause us to be busy and I, I, I actually need to be empowered I need to understand that I'm empowered to make choices and be in control of of many things in my life so I hope that kind of helps I found rest in that in, in prioritizing as well is is massive making sure you you know the things that you should be doing and the things that you shouldn't be doing and do those things and you feel fulfilled then I agree I think it's it's simply about choice what what are you choosing to be busy with what's mm. what's more important what's a priority and do we always get it right certainly not I know I don't um, you know, I can find myself so busied with so many things that I just put other things aside because I don't think it's important. But if we get in our mind that Sabbath time is actually important and it's crucial to us as an individual and to us as a family, to us with how we relate to people, how we work, if we realise that, that it's actually the most important thing rather than additional thing, then suddenly the busyness will make way for the Sabbath and it's about changing your mind on how you see it I think like Paul says. Yeah and, and I think the Sabbath is about taking a time to reflect on that, reflect on your life, reflect how you're living, you know, are you self aware of you know, your anxiety, why are you anxious, it's taking some time out to look at what you're doing, look at what's making you anxious, you know, and go on a journey to, to, to process that. And sometimes we just don't take time because we're just, we're on this, you know, this hamster wheel, you know, this guinea pig life that's just, we're not dictating, but the wheel's dictating to us. And we need to take some time to reflect, have time out to reflect on how God wants us to live. And, you know, and, and, and then we feel empowered and we actually find freedom. As we put structure in our lives, we actually find freedom in that rather than being dictated to by everything else so hopefully, hopefully that answers that question yeah, great okay next question and this is the last one to do with sabbath um people are asking for examples of revelational breakthrough that we've had from taking sabbath time wow um i don't know if i've kind of had breakthrough in i suppose taking time with god there's times when sometimes you get revelation or you, you get in, encouraged in your spirit so i'd always recommend having time of prayer and time with god and quiet time all of that but very what i've found is it's not necessarily taking time out sometimes it's just journeying with god and talking to god and you get a revelation or you get something that god shows you that brings something new into your life and some freedom into your life and I've found you know that on several occasions I don't know if you want to say something yeah I, I agree with Paula taking that time out taking stock of things it does bring revelation it does bring some new understanding and you know some of those things I know I've shared in these last few weeks as I've shared on Sabbath so please go back and listen to those messages because those are the revelations I've had about Sabbath I think from a breakthrough point of view yeah, I do get breakthrough when I spend that Sabbath time because I think it helps me to move and eliminate all those busy thoughts from my, my thinking so that I can focus on what God wants to say to me so I can take stock of where I'm at and what needs to change. And so it does cause breakthrough in my life. It, it causes me to live differently. It causes me to relate differently. And, and I find that really helpful because as Paul was saying earlier, I will get on the treadmill of life and just keep going and keep going and not really think about how I'm acting and what I'm doing and, and how I'm living my life. And yet if I take that Sabbath time, I get that breakthrough and think, actually, I don't want to behave like that. I don't want to relate to people like that. I, I, would, I want to be more like Jesus. And, and it encourages me to break out of those old habits, to, to break break free from things that you know have bound me and held me over the years, things that have, have done damage to my soul. And, and Sabbath gives me a chance to, 
to recognise and see those things, but then also to to find a new path forward from where I've been. So mm. I think it's I just think it's crucial, really. Yeah, and there's a there's a couple of moments that I've had. I'll just share a couple of, of thoughts. Um, you know, one one moment I had was um, a scripture that I felt uh, Jesus give me about how to live daily. Um, and it's from Matthew 11, I think it's verse 28. I've got it here, I'll read it. And this is from the uh, the message version. Eugene Peterson writes it with, with different words. And, and I just love how it, there's some words in here that he writes that really helped me and um, on this journey. And I'll read it to you. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out? Come to me, sorry, burned on religion. Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest walk with me and work with me so there's a combination of sometimes people think that sabbath is devoid of work right you, you remove work out. no there's a, there's a rest we can find in work i believe walk with me and work with me watch how i do it learn this is what i want to emphasize learn the unforced rhythms of grace and then he says i won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly so there's a rhythm that we can live with Jesus as a rhythm of grace that's not forced you know and I think sometimes we, there's so much anxiety because we, we, we've got so much pressure on ourselves to um, live up to different expectations as a you know at a certain age you buy your peers what the world says how you should live you should be married you should have kids your kids should be a certain style there's all of this pressure that's pouring up on you that does not give you rest and I think we've got to learn that actually where we find our our worth and our value is not in these things not even in our children not even in our house or you know the bigger house the bigger car and all these things there's nothing wrong with them as long as we're not that we're not idolizing in other words as long as we don't get our value and worth from, from these things but we first of all get them from God and I believe Jesus wants to teach us this unforced rhythms of grace where we learn to trust him on a daily basis and uh, we, we learn to find rest in him, that God is with us, that God's gone before us, that God promises to provide for us, and he's continually with us and he's forever loving us. As we rest in his grace, then we rest in him and we, we life becomes much easier. It doesn't mean it's a void of all problems, but it becomes much easier because we found rest and peace in God. So for me, that was a, a big revelation. And when I took on the church, I remember having this thought, I can't do this. I cannot do this and then all of a sudden this kind of scripture came to me and the thought that actually I don't need to do this but I'm doing it with God and God will empower me the different that difference that made was I was then dependent on somebody else and not just independence and the difference that made of working with Jesus the weight that it, that, that it took off my shoulders and the expectations that working with him was so much easier than trying to do it on my own I, I tell you that changed my life I'm working with God that's great Paul okay so shall we move on let's have a look at one of the other questions that's come in how are we doing for time are we going on too much or we've got we don't, a we're bit doing more okay time? we'll hurry up last few questions okay so next question then what are some of your lockdown highlights and lessons okay um this is an observation right um sarah's um very good at organizing i can organize but sarah's more natural it's more of a gift administration organization um, in, in our watch Sarah when we went into lockdown she organized the kids right she she created a classroom she, she puts things in place for them so they were all ready and they did all this work and um, I, I'm not a structured kind of person but I do value structure and for me the lesson that I learned just observing Sarah was how much freedom how much rest it brought when there was structure you know when you plan and organize you know it, and it's easy to for us to sit back and go I'll, I'll have rest and I won't do anything it's easier but to put that structure in place and to organize and on a daily basis on a weekly basis watching Sarah I realized how important even more it is to organize and plan because it brings freedom it brings an order which then brings a freedom and uh, it brings a rest I think um, so that was my highlight watching you and it's not phenomenal you know it's not easy it's not always been perfect but 
done a great job um, with the girls, I have to say. That's been one of my highlights. Oh, that's nice of you. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think my highlights also been tied up with probably my, my low thing, really. Obviously, my mum passed away during lockdown, um, which was and still continues to be a real difficulty. But I think the highlight for me in it has just been people's care and love and support. Um, and just the peace of God that I've felt during this time is just been overwhelming and you know it's not necessarily always made it easy and it's not necessarily always taken away the pain but the peace has been there is just a just a, a really strong foundation for me in this season and I think just that love and support of other people mm -hmm. and that foundation of peace God's peace in my life has really helped me through so yeah, and I think the lesson, therefore, from that has been the importance of people. As somebody who was saying earlier that, you know, I, I appreciate time on myself. Sometimes I neglect to see how important people are and how important they, they are to relate to and be close to me. And so it's it's been a reminder of that and a, 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 an additional lesson to, you know, just value people more and more. That's nice, Sarah. Thanks for your care and love. Okay, next question. I think we well we've got a couple of questions on prayer um, that have come in, and we thought well we'll add them in at the end because our next series that's starting in September is on prayer. Oh, so we second. just thank you because that's been organised. Organised. Yeah. So there we go. I'm not stressing about next we're month. We know what's it's going on. It's yeah. sorted. Coming up to prayer. So we just thought we'd answer a couple of questions on prayer before we finish this morning, just to gear you up and get you ready for what's going to be coming um, next month as people share on prayer. And we've got some guest speakers as well, haven't we, talking about prayer. So the first question that's coming is this Why are some prayers answered in the way we think and others not? Are you coming to me on that one? <laughs> well, you should know what? I've got, I've got a great answer to this, and people have probably heard it loads of times because I always share this story. But to me, it answers the question. Because very often, sometimes, you never know why some prayers aren't answered. Well, you know, why did that happen? And sometimes you never know the answer to that this side of eternity. And yet, there was an occasion, and you'll know as soon as I start saying, you probably know already, where I know, the an I know why... God didn't answer the prayer the way I was asking because we found out why and, and it was when I was pregnant with her eldest daughter Grace and she was breached and we were trying to turn her and I'd got in my head I wanted to have a natural birth and it was some really important thing that had got to happen <laughs> and I'd planned it and I'd scheduled it and it wasn't oh, fitting into my plan and my schedule and, and it just wasn't helpful and I was really <laughs> cross with God to be honest with you and I was like God turn this baby I'm believing I'm praying in faith this baby's going to turn and I was really frustrated in the end when I ended up going in for an elective c-section but then we actually got the answer to why God didn't answer the prayer because Grace when she was born they took her out and they, they called Paul over and they showed him that there was actually a true knot in her umbilical cord so if we'd have had a natural birth that that knot would have pulled tight and Grace would have been starved from oxygen and worst case scenario we could have lost her and so God in his manifest wisdom taught us I think a lifelong lesson and one that I, I just enjoy sharing over and over again that God doesn't always answer prayers the way we think because he knows better than us and he knows what's going on in areas where we can't see and we don't understand and so God knew best that Grace didn't need to turn God knew best that I needed a c-section to for us to have it because that was the safest way of her being delivered and being able to be here today and she's 14 years old and healthy and well and so sometimes you know prayers aren't always answered how we think because God Knows, knows bigger god sovereign bigger, uh, bigger god knows bigger and he sees bigger and yeah. he understands more than we can understand or see yeah and i think sometimes we are um i think sometimes we try and analyze you know scripture and we try and analyze god as someone to be analyzed instead of someone to be loved you know why doesn't god do this why doesn't and it's not wrong to ask them questions but you know I, I think it's about discovering who god is and the love of god and learning to trust him that's what he wants to teach us. Really, I think there are lessons for us to learn, but in that lesson is actually to discover who God is more and more. And in that re reflection of him, we realize who we are in him. And I think that's what he's trying to teach us. So, so there are lessons very often to be learned. And like you said, God's manifold wisdom is greater than ours. 
and Weida. It's like the story of Joseph. I mean, you've only got to read that and wonder why his dream and everything and the way it works out. You'll look at his man God's manifold wisdom in all of that. It's phenomenal. And that's what the Old Testament is there for, is to look at them and to stand in awe of what God did, what's done. Jesus Christ, again, is the manifold wisdom of God. And we'll look at what he did on the cross. None of us would have planned it that way. And then we look at our individual lives and we take out this bigger picture and we look at it individually and think, why isn't God answering this? No, we need to look at the whole of Scripture and think, wow, God, God, God knows more than us. And that's what Scripture is there for, to te to, as testimony and to encourage us. You know, and sometimes prayer, uh, this is what I found, sometimes prayer, just one prayer, God wants to teach us to actually push through in prayer and increase our faith. You know, there's times in the Bible, you know, there's times in the Bible where, you know, the, 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 the story where um, they go and knock and ask for more uh, and, and keep bugging people and asking the, the one about the story about the judge where he keeps asking eventually to give in and I think God wants to teach us something that we need to push through in prayer as well so that's a, another lesson for us to learn about increasing our, our faith our perseverance and you know developing our attitude there's all of that that God's working in so I hope that kind of answers a little bit of the question. At the end of the day, God is sovereign and he knows more than us. And it's about trusting him that he does. Yeah, that's it. That's the lesson. Not always easy though. Okay, last <laughs> question then. Um, why is it so hard to pray? Mm, well, well it, at the end of the day, prayer is about relationship, isn't it? Mm. The relationships aren't easy anyway. We know that. We know it can be hard to communicate sometimes. We know we we don't always get it right in, in our relationships with each other and so to relate with God can equally I suppose seem hard but you know there's so many things that want to come against us when we pray. Prayer is such a powerful thing and such a helpful thing for our lives and so there are going to be things that come and get in the way of us praying that you know there's an enemy that wants to stop us relating to God that wants to stop us growing and so he'll do everything he can to stop us talking to God and so I think prayer is hard and I think when we get to grips with that and think okay prayer sometimes can be hard mm -hmm. and so I'm just going to keep going and keep trying and I think in doing that it actually helps and it releases some things and I think if you're more if you persevere more with it then it can take away that hard yeah. that element where it feels so hard sometimes yeah and I think another reason is our, you know, by his bible talk, talks about our flesh you know that w w there's sin in the world and 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 we are we are generally weak with there's a weakness within us that actually can override but in us there's a part of us within our spirit the holy spirit wants to lead us into a different light wants to mature us and grow us so we have a choice it's amazing god gives his choice it, we have a choice what to do, do are we led by our flesh you know uh, with a wrong you know different attitudes can't be bothered all that and we're all we're all living in that and trying to overcome that or we're led by the spirit of god as romans 12 says and do we grow in in in, in going to god and discovering god another reason i think it's hard is our mindset we have a wrong image of god so you know if you look at the prodigal son both of them the the second one the eldest son you know he has a different mindset as the other one the other one you know he's coming home and he's hoping that he'll get something from the father hopefully where the other one he's kind of got this wrong attitude of the father and there are examples in scripture of that and i think that's sometimes what we have so we we think it's hard because our, our God is hard or he's not answering us but when we get an answer to prayer there's nothing better there's nothing better than God answering a prayer and then wow prayer works God is faithful and God is good and we discover something of God's faithfulness and goodness and we realize that there's nothing like prayer so sometimes I think it's it's hard because our mindset needs to change and actually there's a there's, there's a grace and there's a place where we can go to and actually discover God's grace in that and actually makes it much easier. Fantastic. That's my answer. Yeah. And that's all our questions for this morning. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, I want to encourage you to keep, uh, just be yourself and uh, keep journeying with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus and learning to trust Jesus on this journey. There's nothing better than Jesus we've found. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, you know, if you've got other questions, um, we maybe we could do some at another point and try and answer them. We hope that you've enjoyed the, the series on Sabbath and it's been helpful. I want to encourage you to keep going, keep journeying with Jesus, keep trusting him and keep loving him. And bye from us. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you soon. God bless.
Bye.